Go ahead. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today for our first webinar, Downsizing Made Easy. I'm excited to introduce Willie and Stacy Nelson with Midwest Home Heritage located in Lee Summit. They serve as families on both the Kansas and Missouri state line. They've helped me with so many families over the past. I've learned so much from attending their seminars and I look forward to meeting, uh, learning something new again today. And so without further ado, uh, Willie, take it away. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. I'm gonna mute everyone here. So I'm having to do it individually here. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Willie Nelson, and I um, actually am just grateful for the opportunity uh, that Denise Cox has given us today to present uh, one of my favorite topics, Downsizing Made Easy. It's the five easy steps to a successful move. Um, again, my name is Willie Nelson. I'm a certified senior housing professional, actually uh, with the Senior Real Estate Institute, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, realtor, just like Denise said, licensed in both Kansas and Missouri. Uh, we, we do handle uh, moves on both sides of the state line uh, with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. And my wife and I, Stacy, uh, we actually have um, a small real estate team called Midwest Heritage Homes Team. It's a great honor to have the opportunity to share with you today some of the steps to simplify what we call a downsizing move, or we also call right sizing. Before we would get started, though, we want to again thank Denise uh, for this opportunity to be able to speak today. And I'm going to go ahead and check over to the next slide here. So I've actually been specializing in downsizing and senior real estate since 2014. Uh, my wife, Stacy is actually on the board of directors for the Jackson County Professionals in Aging, and we are both certified senior housing professionals. And again, that is a designation with the Senior Real Estate Institute. The material that I'm actually going to be covering today was written by Dr. Nikki Buckaloo. She's the founder of the Senior Real Estate Institute and a 20-year veteran uh, realtor specializing in senior real estate. In her career, Nikki and her team work with hundreds of older adults and families who are moving from their longtime residence into something more manageable, sometimes a smaller single family home and oftentimes a senior living community. She also coaches and trains realtors across the country on how to best serve senior adults in the process. I personally coach with Nikki and develop systems and tools to serve seniors who find themselves making um, such a move. So today we're gonna cover five five steps uh, to the downsizing made easy. First of all, it's step one is creating the plan itself. Step two is communicating with your family and friends. Step three, surrounding yourself with professionals. Step four, dealing with a house full of possessions. And five, my favorite, celebrating your new lifestyle. So step one really is the downside in, in, the, in the process. It really is the most critical. The decision as to where you're going to move, when you're going to move, and how your lifestyle is going to look once you make that move um, that's done by you and not by somebody else. Um, the best time to make these decisions is when you have more choices rather than fewer choices. When a family member or a doctor or other well-meaning advisor makes a decision for someone to move, it is not typically well received. I don't know about you, but I do like to be, do not like to be told what to do. And if I'm going to be told what to do, I want some say in it. So truly step one is the downsizing process of, in, this, in the process of downsizing made easy is creating the plan. It involves being actively engaged in the research of, interviewing of, and decision-making process where and when you're going to make that move. Not sure where to start? 
Today is the perfect place. You don't have to move today, this year, or even next. What you do need to do is begin to think about it. Maybe you think that, that you don't want to move at all, and that's a decision, and that's totally fine. Most people don't. The question is, what if? Do you want to be the one to make the decision, or do you want someone else to make it for you? If you make the decision, then you will want to put a plan in place. And here are a few considerations you want to look at with your options. Current, long-term health, social interaction desired, your transportation, either now or later, and what hobbies and interests you have to pursue. There's lots of senior living options. Now, I know that Denise, if you're on here today, you've already been working with Denise, so you've made your decision. You are already one step ahead of everybody else because many people have not made that decision to work with Denise. Um, and so, but many times we don't even know where to get started and so that can be very confusing. So the next step, we're gonna go right into the next step. And the reason I'm choosing to move on is because you are and have already made the decision to work with Denise. But once you've decided to make that move, it's really important that you communicate your wishes with your family and friends. That's part of making um, your decision. And what I want to make sure that's very clear today is that you're not asking for anyone's permission you're simply sharing your wishes with your family and friends. It is establishing expectations from the start. And I think that's really important. Again, it's about clarifying expectations, getting their buy-in for the decision that you've made. Um, although this may be a difficult conversation to have, it can make all the difference in the world when it comes time to actually make your move. So some of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is first is share, okay? So in, that, in the share section, you're gonna talk about your preferred living arrangements, um, talk and share who, that you, who your professional service providers are gonna be. The next step is creating um, written documents that outline your wishes. Sometimes we are put into emergency situations and we have to make the move quickly. And if you already have a plan in place, then your family and friends know what your, um, your, what your wishes are. Not all families communi communicate effectively. Maybe it's just me and my experience and not yours, but we have found that, what we have found is that clients make decisions in advance, inform their children or support system, have a much simpler and hassle-free move. If everyone is trying to do what is best and they aren't sure of your wishes, it can create stress for you and for them. Our Downsizing Made Easy Guide has forms and tools included that make communicating this information easy. We give one of those to all of our clients and people we meet personally for planning uh, consultations. Some of our clients are ready to make the move right away, while others are simply a few years out. And this guide helps you walk through the entire process. And because you're work you are already working with Denise, um, we will share this document with each of you. Um, so you're going to want to, if this is something that you want, get with Denise that you do, and then we'll make sure to get that, uh, Stacy will make sure to get that sent to you. So here's a copy, and it's just, it, it's just a, the top part of the copy, but um, it's a letter that you can have as part of your file, but also be able to share it with your family uh, and friends that, that are part of that decision-making process. And in this letter, it gives them very detailed information about what your choices are. Um, and so that's, again, really important. That You'll see that as part of the guide that you'll be receiving. Communicating your intentions effectively is all about how you say it. For instance, you could say, honey, I just wanted you to know that your father and I have been doing some research and we've toured three to four senior communities here locally that we found to be appealing. We're planning to sell our home in six months and move to Denise's community. We just wanted to let you know, do you have any questions? Again, it's getting their buy-in, but you're not asking for permission. And I, again, I wanna make sure that's very clear through this process. The next step is making sure you have the support you need to help make the move as smooth as possible. The last thing you wanna be is exhausted, 
sick or in pain after your move. So these are just some of the professionals that we work with that you may need throughout your process of downsizing. It isn't uncommon for people who are making a downsizing move to get hung up here. Questions come up like, where do I start? Who do I call? The key is to surround yourself with professionals that know what they're doing and are familiar with all the complexities of this type of move. As the client, you remain in control of the decisions and we serve as a trusted advisor so that your move is as hassle-free as possible. I may be a bit biased, so I'll admit this up front, but I would recommend that your first call be to your realtor. Uh, who, like me, who is an expert in senior real estate and housing. I have a team of vetted providers, such as estate liquidators, organizers, movers, packers, home stagers, handymen, move managers, attorneys, financial planners, and other service providers you may possibly need to make your move seamless and simple. Knowing that your service providers are familiar with this type of move can be very comforting knowing that you have someone like myself as a project manager during the move um, and it removes a lot of the burden off your adult children and other family members who will be assisting. Here are a few examples of the people I have relationship with and can confidently recommend as many as my clients uh, as they go through the downsizing process. Now this leads me to step four. One of the biggest challenges that older adults and family members have is deciding what to do with personal possessions. When someone has lived in their home for 30 or 40 years, they have typically accumulated a lot of stuff. One of the most common statements made by our older adult clients is, I'm just too overwhelmed. They want to make the move or they need to make the move, but are truly overwhelmed with the immensity of the task at hand. Naturally, if we're working with them, we're able to connect them with the resources to help them through the process and be their project manager. For those that want to tackle the task on their own, However, we have a few simple uh, tips to simplify your process. Start small, 15 minutes a day, a closet, a cabinet is a great place to start. Items typically fall into five categories. Keep and move, donate, sentimental value, trash, and sell. I'll go through that cut all through the categories again. Keep and move, so the things you're gonna take with you. Donate, sentimental value family, trash, and sell. As you're sorting, go ahead, give away those items that you want to donate or give to family members. Sorry, I'm gonna admit there's someone, if, if, you, if you have not muted, would you do me a favor and mute your, um, Mute yourself for me. Actually, I've done it. Perfect. As you're sorting, go ahead and again, give away those items that you were ready to donate. Give to family members, label or pack those things that you plan to keep and move. The best part is that the estate liquidators can take care of the rest. They also know what the value is and what doesn't or is in doubt. If they, if, so if in doubt, let them decide for you. So it's important to know that as far as the state liquidators. Speaking of estate sales, most people think estate sales happen when someone dies. They've passed away, their house is, is left and their family has an estate sale. That is not necessarily true. Most estate sales actually occur while the person is still living and they've made the decision to downsize. The state sale or auction is genuinely, generally the best solution in most cases when someone is downsizing and moving into a smaller place. Naturally, this is someone we have a, we, that we have trusted resources with and can help connect you with the right people for the job. 
Remember the goal is to simplify. Garage sales are exhausting and are rarely as profitable as estate sales or auctions, even after your commissions. Unfortunately, many people think that all realtors are alike. The truth is most agents do not have a network of professionals that are geared to handle a complex move that includes downsizing. Their expertise may be to help you sell your home, but our team wants this move to be as hassle-free as possible as we pull out all the stops. This is my shameless plug for why you would want to hire our team to help you or people you know with late in life moves. Now that you've made your move and you're starting to settle into your new place, it's time to reflect and celebrate. You've simplified your life, created some space and time to do more of what you enjoy. Maybe it's time to pick up a new hobby that you didn't have time to enjoy or start volunteering someplace where you feel you can make a difference. There are three key factors that are found to be positively correlated with a successful adjustment to your new lifestyle. One, level of optimism. If you think it'll be, if you think it will be great, it will likely be. Conversely, if you think it will be a negative experience, it probably will be. Your support network. Having people around you who care about you is key. And finally is your level of activity. Staying involved in the process and active will help you adjust. Those are all things that as you first move into your community, Denise and her team will be working with you to make sure that that adjustment, uh, that you make the adjustment as easily as possible. Now, as you're adjusting, it's important to communicate your feelings and any concerns with your family, your friends, and the trusted professionals around you so that they can provide physical and or emotional support. Keep a journal, a notebook nearby. Each day, once or twice a day, make some mental notes, then write them down. How do I feel today? How am I handling this move? Any, are there any loose ends that are left untied that I need to have a conversation with someone about? Take the time and have the conversations. As you celebrate your move, remember that you may also still be adjusting emotionally to the change and your change in scenery. This is less technical and more personal. Paying attention to how you feel is very important. It is said that regardless of age, moving is a top critical factor of stress. If you couple that with moving from a home that you've had for 20, or 30 or 40 years, it is natural for people to experience a mixture of emotions. In order to be healthy, both physically and emotionally, during and after the move, it is critically important to stay well rested, hydrated, and make sure that you're eating right. Again, all of those are things that your, not only your friends and family can help you with, but Denise and her team can help you with as well. So now let's take a moment and recap. There are, again, five steps. I want to go quickly through those five steps with you one more time. Step one is creating a plan. Again, you're already working with Denise. It sounds like you've started that plan. The next step is to communicate that plan with your friends and family. Again, making sure that you're simply letting them know your plans and you're getting the buy-in from them. Step three, surround yourself with professionals. Step four, deal, dealing with a house full of possessions. And step five is celebrating your new lifestyle. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and close out um, the recording and then we will take, if there are any questions, we'll take questions.